built this server and its backup unit, which you can see here. I did a video on it, and that video got uh, a lot of hits. So today, I'm making a video on this server's successor. It's an 8 terabyte server built on FreeNAS. These servers were fun to build, and it's a testament to FreeNAS that they've been up for two years, and I haven't had a problem. That's not to say that they've been running for two years. And one's running on a Pentium 4 2 gigahertz chip, and the backup is running on a Pentium 3 1 gigahertz chip. FreeNAS runs on old, cheap, free hardware. That's why it's so wonderful. You could spend $2,000 building an 8 terabyte server with dedicated equipment, or you could spend $600 for the hard drives and the card and use an old, cheap, throwaway PC. Here we have the hardware that we're going to be putting inside the new server. We've got Western Digital Drives. Newegg was having a sale on them for $140 a piece. It's a very good price for 200 or 2 terabyte drives. And uh, we're using a Rocket Raid 1740 to uh, control the drives. Uh, I'm going to try to do a hardware raid in this build, unlike the software builds that I did the software raids that I did last time. But uh, if that doesn't work, then uh, I'll go back to the software raids. FreeNAS software raids work fine. And some people have suggested that if I build a hardware raid for it, that it might even be slower than the software raid. But we'll see. I can always do one or the other if it doesn't work the way I want it to. This is a Dell Precision 450. My brother gave it to me. It was part of a load of computers that his company was getting rid of. It is a dual processor Xeon based machine. So there's two 2.6 gigahertz Xeon processors in this box. That should be a substantial upgrade from the Pentium 4 that I'm using in the prior server. The beautiful thing about this Dell box is that it's pretty easy to work with. And even though it's seven years old. It was built in 2003. It's pretty, it was pretty high-end back in the day. So the box was free. The processors were free. I have installed four gig of RAM in the machine. I can't see that. And the plan is to go ahead and uh, put these drives in and put the card in, and it should be pretty much plug and play. I'll pull out the old hard drive that I've got in there right now and uh, I'll use the there's a, a Matrox Millennium graphics card and since we really don't care about graphics cards for a server that should be fine. I have to do a little bit of a kludge because this is a Dell box uh, and try to get these drives to fit in uh, despite the fact that that's not the best way to do it. But these drives are just going to sit here for years. They're not going to get too much movement. So even though that's not the way to do it, it should be fine. The drives slide in a lot better uh, where they're supposed to go without the jury rigging. But uh, you know, you just can't get too frustrated when you're working with this stuff. You have to give yourself time and if stuff doesn't work, try a different way and take your time with it and have fun with it because there's no point in getting uh, worked up or frustrated. Eventually you'll figure it out. The card work should be the easiest part of the build. We have some old cards we want to take out. We'll leave the graphics card in. We'll pull out this Firewire port. Make sure it's securely seated. Everything was seated well. Didn't mess up the graphics card and then you just pop that back down these dull cases. And the card work is done. Now, the cabling isn't that hard, but I did have a moment of panic because you see in these old machines you're going to need an adapter to put the power supplies into the SATA drives. And uh, I had to run around and see if I had them, but I did. Otherwise connecting the cables are, is trivial. Once you have the cables they only go in one way. So it's, uh, it's quite an easy thing to do. 
And uh, so long as they plug into the adapter and plug into the drive, uh, one controller cable, one power cable for each, you'll be in business. Some people are really particular about their cable placement. They'll take the cables and they'll tie them off and they'll route them and they'll just do all these crazy things to make sure that they're, they're neat and orderly. That's not me. I really don't care one way or the other. The one thing that you do have to make sure of, though, is that you're not blocking any fans because that can cause overheating and expensive blue smoke. But uh, this is, because it's an old Dell, and because it's so overbuilt, it's got uh, shields over the fans and uh, a fan for each processor, which is really cool. And uh, it's not, the fans aren't going to get blocked by any of my cable malfeasance. So, okay, yeah, some people, the, the more anal of you who really like your cables to look nice and everything, you're going to hate what I'm going to do, but <laughs> that's it. So long as... Uh, <laughs> As long as it's not so bad that the case doesn't close, you're in good shape. But other than that, stick a fork in it, it's done. I've read the Rocket Raid manual and I've set up a 6 terabyte Raid 5 with the 8 terabytes of space. This is the boring part because now we have to try to get uh, FreeNAS to work and uh, well that can take time. Pray it's booting. Okay, now we're back at the web GUI side of FreeNAS to do the final configuration. Okay, as you can see I added the Rocket Raid drive uh, and the size is almost 6 terabytes so you can see it's in RAID 5 already. Now it's uh, formatting the disk in with the UFS file system and as you can see it's done. So now we'll just mount the drive and uh, turn on Samba and hope it works. Okay, here I'm adding the mount point. I'm using the GPT partition and uh, leaving all the defaults. Okay, Samba's up. We've got almost six terabytes of usable space. I'm doing a test of the speed right now. I'm getting uh, 323 megabits in and 14.6 out, but right now I'm uploading a file folder this is good because my old server would only do about 100 megabits, even with gigabit LAN. So uh, the, the LAN port, I was worried about that uh, as far as whether it was gigabit or not. Clearly, clearly it is. Just for fun, I'm running my, other, my old server so that you can see the difference in speed. Uh, it's coming in at 142 or 150 megabits. It's funny because the other machine takes off a power of 10 and only shows it at uh, 14 megabits. Kind of interesting, which to believe in terms of raw speed. But the good part is that I'm getting about double the speed on my new server over my old one. So uh, I'm pleased. So there we have it. My new server is up and uh, I'm a happy camper.